Hi everybody, welcome back to Sweatpants BI. This is part four of our HR report walkthrough where I'm actually going to start getting into designing our background layout for our Power BI tool. Now I will say that the in the first part of this video, I'm going to go through picking a color scheme and how to transfer those colors from PowerPoint to Power BI. I always include this video just to be thorough in case this is the first time that you've watched me do one of these walkthrough videos. But if you have already seen me do this process, I know that this is one of the most boring things that I do in my Power BI videos. Personally, I'm tired of recording this segment, but I've had people that complain, oh, Sean, how did you get the colors back and forth? So I always include it now because it only takes a few minutes. But if you have seen me uh, take a, a PowerPoint theme of colors and transfer those over to Power BI. It's a pretty manual, tedious, boring thing to watch me do. So feel free to skip past the uh, color scheme portion of this video to where I start actually designing the background layout. That's going to be a lot more interesting. That, With that said, let's go ahead and get into some of the fun stuff, which is actually designing our layout for our Power BI tool. And then, of course, in part five, we're going to start integrating those design choices with the visuals that we've already stood up in our report. So now that we've laid out most of our data visualizations uh, for the three core pages of our report, uh, in other words, we've kind of got the bones of our report already worked out. Now it's time to get to uh, what for me is the more fun stuff of designing Power BI reports, and that is uh, the aesthetics of the Power BI tool. In other words, how are we going to create a tool that looks amazing while also, and, and also presents this uh, particular data in a very attractive and insightful manner. And so what this means is we're going to be, you know, making careful selections of all the colors that we're using in this report. And we're going to be making uh, careful choices around when we utilize color, uh, not just throughout the uh, presentation of the report itself, but within every single data visual to make sure that we're calling out what really matters. So currently we're using the default uh, Power BI color theme, which you can see has this uh, very vibrant uh, blue, which I'm not a huge fan of. And then it's got kind of a dark blue, an orange, a purple, a pink and a yellow, which I find are almost never great choices uh, in a Power BI color theme. So uh, in case you haven't watched any of my other uh, Power BI videos on my uh, Sweatpants BI YouTube channel, I'm not a huge fan of the default Power BI theme. I almost always bring my own color palette. And usually where that process starts is in PowerPoint. Uh, you know, yes, I use PowerPoint to design almost all of my Power BI uh, backgrounds and layouts. Are there better tools than Power BI? Yeah, probably. Uh, but PowerPoint works pretty well for me because after all, uh, the main, the driving force of designing our Power BI tools is should not ever be the design software that we're using to build the layouts in the backgrounds. Ultimately, it's the data that should be front and center. It's the data that should sing, not the background. So yes, there are probably better design packages out there uh, in software, but I use PowerPoint for almost everything. So PowerPoint is where we're ultimately going to choose a maybe more appropriate or more attractive color palette. And then we're just going to migrate those colors over into Power BI. But first things first, Sean, you're talking about uh, building a better color palette than the default Power BI color scheme. How do we do that? What does that even mean? There is a fantastic article that I reference all the time by a, um, by a person named Chris Decker. Uh, this article uh, appeared, I think, for the first time on this 99designs website. Honestly, I stumbled across this article on a Google, but it still does a really good job of sort of presenting color theory and giving you uh, enough of a crash course in color theory to make the smartest de decisions possible when understanding which colors to pick. And so some things that I like to highlight in this article uh, include just understanding color wheel basics. Ultimately, uh, for most Power BI tools, I think you can get away with just two or three colors, honestly. 
Uh, most of my Power BI tools tend to be kind of grayscale because there are always all kinds of data points that we're presenting when we build Power BI tools that are just kind of there. You know, they're not terribly interesting, but they are part of the story and we want to show those data points, but maybe they're not necessarily the most interesting things in a given data visual and maybe they're not things that we want to highlight. We want to use color to highlight uh, you know, some of the more interesting points in the data so that people are more likely to see them. And when it comes to highlighting, we highlight by establishing contrast. And colors that contrast or play really well together are warm colors and cool colors. Warm colors tend to be more of your sort of fall and autumn colors here in the United States, uh, things like, you know, red, orange, yellow, uh, you know, the colors that the, the trees start to sort of transform into uh, as summer sort of, you know, my, uh, transforms into winter. Cooler colors are, you know, things that, you know, kind of evoke a more cold presence, things like blues and purples, and maybe even a few uh, of your sort of more blue leaning uh, green colors. You know, and then, of course, we can sort of balance colors by doing things like adding a little bit of uh, black or white or gray. I especially love to use uh, more of a flat color scheme where I'm taking colors and there's just a touch, a very subtle touch of gray within those colors to sort of flatten them out and make them a little less vibrant. That's just my, my personal uh, preference. You know, this is this most of the colors in uh, this sort of uh, rainbow spe spectrum that you're seeing here can be balanced and work very well within the context of a Power BI report. But this is the area that I really wanted to focus on when choosing our color palette for a Power BI tool, because honestly, these three sections that you see here or what I come back to time and time again when making color choices in Power BI. Like I said, most of your Power BI tools should only have two or three real colors spotlighted. If you get much beyond having two or three colors, chances are your Power BI reports aesthetics are going to be compromised from an overuse of color, and it's going to be kind of a sensory overload on your audience. There's going to be so much color and so much going on that they're not going to know, you know, uh, what do these colors mean? Um, you know, what am I supposed to focus on? You know, color should be used sparingly and only to sort of call out uh, specific data points uh, or things that you really want to highlight and make sure that your users are seeing. And, you know, oftentimes for that, you only need like one color. If you're using a primarily gray aesthetic, maybe you just want to use orange or blue to sort of highlight uh, different aspects of your data. I uh, personally use a lot of orange and blue. I kind of come back to this specific example. Complementary colors tend to contrast very well. So if, you have, or if you're trying to help your users see the difference between two different categories of data, you want to find complementary colors that you can use to sort of contrast like maybe higher elements in your data with lower elements in your data or maybe track two populations against each other. So, you know, any colors that are sort of opposite from each other on this color wheel are probably going to work very well together and also sort of work within the presentation of the data in your Power BI report. If you're trying to present a scale of colors or sort of a, you know, uh, evolution or progression of values within a data visual, maybe you want to use analogous colors that sort of fall on the same range of a color scale, you know, sort of uh, transitioning from uh, greens into blues into purples, uh, or maybe just lighter shades of blue into darker shades of blue, things like that, when you're trying to es establish a specific scale or progression within a data visual. But when designing my overall Power BI theme, I tend to focus on more of a sort of three color approach where triadic colors uh, really come into play. So uh, a lot of the times when I'm choosing my Power BI theme or my colors, I'm always sure to have some kind of orange, some kind of blue, and maybe something that's kind of along uh, the red or more uh, warm to cool spectrum, like this sort of uh, Merlot or dark magenta color that you're seeing here. This is just my personal preference, but if you are someone who struggles to figure out what makes an attractive color scheme or how, or how to balance color throughout your reports, 
I highly recommend that you check out Chris Decker's uh, article here, The Seven Step Guide to Understanding Color Theory on 99designs. It is a fantastic article for just quickly wrapping your heads around the very important basics of color uh, theory and how to incorporate those within designs. And I love that she also uses some very specific sort of logo uh, examples to really help you sort of understand how colors work together. So I digress. Now that we have at least enough of a background in color theory to sort of understand how to make these choices, let's go ahead and head up here to the design section within PowerPoint where we can sort of see some of the different color palettes that are available to us. I'm just going to select this gallery option real quickly and open up my format background option so that we can take a quick look at this color pal palette. And you can see that this is an example of a color palette that has more uh, of the analogous approach uh, to colors, where we have sort of a progression from sort of a greenish blue to blue to purple to red. So if you remember uh, the example and the article over here, this is kind of what uh, that gallery theme in PowerPoint is getting at with this sort of analogous part uh, of the color wheel where all of the colors in this palette sort of sit next to each other on the color uh, color wheel, or at least very close to each other. There is also, if I drop this down, there is an example over here that I really like, where you get more of that triadic color scheme that I really like, where you have sort of an orange, blue, and a Merlot with maybe uh, some other colors sort of peppered in as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out of that. And you can see I've got a dark blue, a very light blue, and then I've got almost exactly what I was looking for over here with kind of a bright orange, a blue, a purple. So I've got several colors to play with here, honestly, far more than I'm going to need in Power BI, but I've at least got this sort of orange, blue, and sort of this purple and red here, which is really what I was interested in. So I can tell you without even formatting the data visuals in my report yet, I'm going to be using almost entirely this orange, maybe this blue in my report. That's largely going to be it. So I'm also going to be using this tab here to go ahead and create my uh, Power BI layout. So the first thing that I'm going to need is I want to get rid of this sort of, um, you know, very techie uh, or, you know, network diagram looking sort of, uh, you know, background image by just hiding background graphics. That's going to give me a blank canvas to work with. All I did is I went over here and clicked on hide background graphics. I've got my color scheme over here. The next thing that I need to do is I need to get all of my colors from here into Power BI. And so this isn't going to take too long. Honestly, it's not the most exciting thing that I'm going to be doing in this class. So it's kind of like once you get the point or get the gist of what I'm doing, feel free to go ahead and skip on to the next video. But the way that I like to do this pretty quickly is just drop eight squares into my Power BI report or into my PowerPoint rather, just distribute them horizontally, align them all to the middle. And then I'm just gonna go through up here real quickly and select each of the colors. There we go. And let's go ahead and grab the first color by going over here to Format Shape, uh, clicking on my color, opening up more colors, and these hex codes that identify the unique color are what I'm after. So now let's head back over to Power BI. Let's go to our View tab and Themes, and let's click on Customize the Current Theme. And here are the eight colors that are in Power BI, just like we have eight colors over here in our PowerPoint theme. I don't know why uh, Microsoft settled on eight colors for the palette, but hey, we can work with that. At least it's one-to-one -one between Power BI and PowerPoint, eight colors for both themes. So we're just going to open up the first color and we're going to swap that hex code out in Power BI with the hex code from PowerPoint. And now we're going to head back over to PowerPoint and we're going to grab the next code, 
head back over to Power BI and replace that. And this is where the process becomes pretty rinse and repeat. We're just going to keep going back and forth between Power BI and PowerPoint, each time going to the next square and grabbing the hex code. And once again, not the most exciting thing, but you can see that I'm able to sort of chip away at these relatively quickly. Just three more left. And now just one more and we're done. And after I paste that last code, you can see that we've now got all eight of our PowerPoint theme colors over here in Power BI. Once I apply those, you can see all of my colors change. Frankly, it makes the report look even uglier at a glance, but it's okay because we're gonna be changing all of this in the, uh, in the videos to come. So if I just click on the background here and go over to my canvas settings, you can see the color palette. There it is. We've got kind of the dark blue, light blue, green, orange, everything that we're working with over here in PowerPoint. And this is just going to make it easier for us to make sure that the background layout, layouts that we're designing align perfectly with the color combinations that we can utilize in our data visuals. So now that we've got our uh, color palette and theme established and brought into um, Power BI, now it's time to actually start designing the formal layouts for the background of our Power BI tabs. Now, as we start designing the layouts for our Power BI tabs, I just want to remind you about a specific, very subtle design choice that I made, even when I was just sort of, you know, arbitrarily lobbing Power BI uh, visuals onto the pages here. And that was that on every single one of these pages, I sort of created an imaginary boundary right down the middle of each of these Power BI pages. So on the left here, we've got our year slicer, our overall headcount uh, card, got a couple of bar charts, uh, one stacked horizontal bar chart, and um, all of our headcount, you know, and where they're located across the United States. And over here in this section, uh, I created a special area that primarily just focuses on more demographic information. You know, it's not really um, you know, business attributes of the employees, such as which departments they're in, uh, maybe what kind of role they have, or, um, you know, uh, which office they work in. It's really, you know, they're a breakdown of all the employees by gender, by age, by race, by education, marital status, things like that. On the retention page, it's kind of the same thing. Here's all the more business stuff that we know. And over here, there's sort of a special uh, visual that is a slope chart that allows us to compare retention across all kinds of different fields from our data set using the field parameter uh, tool within Power BI. And then the same thing kind of goes for turnover. Uh, here's all of our more departmental level stuff. And over here on the right, we have um, more information that is specifically related to the employees who have left in a given time frame, including a roster of all those employees, a breakdown of which employees left voluntarily versus involuntarily, and a bar chart breaking down employees by the reason that they left. So there is kind of an imaginary half and half split on almost every single page. And we're going to we're going to try to carry that over in the design of our Power BI report. So first, let's just go ahead and quickly lay out our Power BI report. I'm going to go with kind of a light theme on this Power BI report as opposed to a dark theme. Some people ask me, Sean, uh, you know, when, when do you decide to go with a light theme versus a dark theme? And usually I say something like it depends on which side of the bed I get 
to get out on in the morning. I don't really have a tried and true uh, rule for when I go light versus dark. I will say that a dark theme can be a little bit easier on the eyes. For me, it can have a certain wow factor that a light theme report doesn't have. But that said, a whole lot of Power BI tools that you build in your career are probably going to be more light theme in nature. So it's definitely important to go ahead and nail down the fundamentals of designing light theme Power BI tools. And I also tend to have a, uh, an aesthetic or uh, overall design for landscape formatted Power BI reports that I recycle across a ton of tools. So you're gonna see a lot of my Power BI reports, especially when they're landscape design, or they all kind of look the same. And that's fine because it just, it works for me. It's a very clean and repeatable uh, sort of Power BI layout that I can personally throw together in just a couple of minutes and it looks great and it allows me to make sure that the data or the data visuals are the star of the show which is re really what is most important to me fundamentally so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and drop a couple of rectangles into my power bi report and these rectangles are just going to serve as kind of a, a boundary or staging area for all of my data visuals which are go going to go in this section down here and really, all I'm trying to accomplish with these is to have an area up here where I can sort of put some controls for my Power BI report, a title, maybe an icon or a company logo if I had one. This is a fake company, so I'm not going to be putting a logo on this one, but I will put an icon on here just to sort of demonstrate where a logo could go. And then down here at the bottom, I typically tend to put things like uh, my name as a designer, uh, maybe uh, in an in actual enterprise report, I might put other stakeholders with whom I worked on in designing this report. And sometimes I put like a refresh date or honestly, sometimes I put nothing at all. This bar is just down here to sort of mark the end of the report. So let's go ahead real quickly and go ahead and start laying out some design choices here. Another thing that I like to do that is just a personal aesthetic quirk of mine is I'm actually gonna add an additional smaller rectangle just as kind of a border. And I'm going to go with a gradient up here at the top. I'm gonna use my orange and let's go ahead and make this a linear gradient and I'm going to have this run from kind of left to right. I'm trying to just keep this very, very subtle here. I'd like to make this just a little bit smaller. And now one thing, if you just want to get a little bit fancy, I'm going to go ahead and just click on this first rectangle, grab my format painter, and I'm going to click on the smaller rectangle and then I'm going to go over here to angle and I'm just going to enter 180. In other words, I want to flip this gradient completely around in the opposite direction. And you end up with something like this where the color that you see in this top right corner ends up kind of reflected down here and vice versa for sort of the orange color pop that I selected. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to grab my format painter grab that there and I'm going to change this back to a zero angle and I'm going to flip the bottom one so that I have this kind of left to right thing happening. Now it's time to go ahead and add a title to our report. And I'm going to be super, super simple here. I'm just going to call it HR report. I'm going to grab a better font here. A font that I use all the time is Bond Schrift Condensed. Again, it's just a personal aesthetic thing. There's not a lot of bells and whistles to it. I find it very, very easy to read. And yet, you know, it's bold enough that it does kind of tend to pop out or stand forward for me. And I'm going to go over to text effects and I'm going to add just a very light shat drop shadow. And then I'm going to test and see if I can even get away with making the font just a little bit larger. That's looking pretty good to me. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and drop one more text box in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag this down to the bottom right corner. Or if you want to, we can also just use the built-in text property of the rectangle itself. And I'm just gonna put that this was designed by Sweatpants BI, if I can spell BI. There we go. Let's go ahead and pick Bond Shrift again. I'm gonna just go ahead and decrease the size of that font a little bit. This is not something that I necessarily want to stand out, you know, in a super bold way. I'm okay with it being kind of subtle and just down there in the bottom right corner. And now let's go ahead and see if we can find an icon that might make sense for our HR headcount tool. I'm just gonna type in people and I'm gonna see if I can find a nice icon that might be appropriate here. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this sort of three person icon. And let's go ahead and shrink it down just a little bit. I'm gonna try to fit it up here in the top right corner. And now if you wanna get even extra fancy with this icon, I'm gonna go ahead and just right click on it. I'm going to convert it to a shape. Let's go ahead and zoom all the way in on it. And I'm gonna take the shape now and I'm going to ungroup it so that I can select even the head of one of these icons. And I'm going to select the two guys in the back first by holding down control. And I'm just going to see, you know, what it looks like if I, you know, make it kind of a dark orange. And then let's see what it looks like here. If I make this gentleman white to sort of stand out a little bit more. Now I'm going to click on this bottom right corner again to sort of force everything. Uh, to refit the page. That's looking pretty good to me. And now I'm just going to go over here and again, I have sort of this area over here that I'm kind of spotlighting. And so maybe I just want to make sure that I'm calling that out. So I'm going to go over here and let's see. I'm going to go ahead and just grab this sort of rounded corners shape and I'm going to rotate it. 90 degrees. Let's go ahead and just kind of drag this up. I'm going to leave just a little bit of space here. I don't want it like right up against my border. I want to leave just enough room and I want to try to have exactly the same space at the bottom. And now because I've got, you know, quite a bit of white space here that I would, that I probably won't be able to use, I'm just going to make these rounded corners a little bit tighter so that they're taking up as much of that white space as possible. And now let's go ahead and see how light we can make this. We want it to be very subtle, but we also want to make sure that people can see it. So I'm just going to go a smidge darker. And you might even play around a little bit with adding something like a drop shadow. Now I'm just kind of, you know, taking a step back and looking at everything. You know, it's totally fine to not get your design perfect the first time. The things that I'm not really liking are how large HR report is. And also I'm not really liking the sort of burnt orange color of my two gentlemen in the back here. So let's go ahead and see if another color might work better. I think that I just like a light orange, something a little bit more subtle. Let's go ahead and refit everything. And now, you know, what we really want to do is we want to make sure that on any given page that people know exactly what they're looking at. You know, we're probably going to have the title of the report here on the cover page. So on other pages, maybe the title of the report becomes something a little bit less important. You know, by hopefully by the second, third, and fourth page, people know that they're looking at the HR report. So maybe we want to push HR report to the background to kind of help people 
really focus on the primary subject of the page that they're looking at. So I'm going to go ahead and give the text here for HR report. I'm going to go ahead and make that kind of, you know, just light enough that people can plainly read it. But I'm going to go ahead and add a new title here for headcount. I'm going to make sure that that really stands out so that people now know we're looking at the headcount page of the HR report. And I'm basically just going to take this layout or this design and recycle it for all the other pages in my report. Obviously, I don't want to have a completely different layout and design and aesthetic on every page of my Power BI tool. I want there to be consistency and I want people to feel like the tool as a whole is very uniform and sort of cohesive. So in order to do that, I'm just going to take my first page here and I'm just going to copy it twice. Obviously, you can see that that annoying background image from the theme that I picked in PowerPoint is back. It's no problem. Let's just hold down shift and select both slides. Let's go over here to our to the right where we have format background. We're going to hide background graphics. We're going to change the background to a solid fill. We're going to make sure that it's white. And of course, uh, it is. And so now you can see we've got the same layout for all three pages here. So I'm going to change the title of the next page from headcount to retention. Since we've got plenty of room, you might even want to call it employee retention. That's totally up to you. And we're going to call the next one employee turnover. You might also notice that I'm, I switched from sort of a camel case to all uppercase. Again, just to sort of focus the viewer or the audience's attention on the title of this specific page. They already know they're in the HR report, so I'm kind of repressing um, or, or suppressing rather that information to the background by giving it kind of an orange color. And I'm using this white bold contrast in all caps to really focus the user's attention on the title of this page. And once we have all three of our pages, the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to quickly save them. And in this case, I'm going to save them to... Let me go ahead and find my HR folder. And I created a backgrounds folder and I'm going to save this as a JPEG. And let's go ahead and call this uh, image that I'm saving. I'm going to call this one headcount. I'm just going to save that slide. Then I'm going to save the next page. And let's go back to our backgrounds folder. I'm going to save it as a JPEG. I'm going to call this one retention. And last but not least, I'm going to go back to my backgrounds folder and save my last background as turnover. And once I've saved all three of those, let's go ahead and head back to Power BI. And I'm going to go to my canvas or background settings. So canvas background, that's the property of the entire uh, sort of background that I have here for this Power BI page. I'm going to go to browse backgrounds. I'm going to grab headcount. I'm going to make sure that the image fit is set to fit, and I'm going to make sure that transparency is not set to 100% so that we can actually see the background image. And there it is. And of course, everything currently looks terrible because I haven't formatted my visuals or cleaned anything up, but it's not a big deal. By the time we're done with this, everything's going to look great, but at least for now, we can see our background image. And I'm just going to do the same thing on my other pages here. Let's go ahead and grab our retention background. Right now you can see it's there, but it's gigantic. So let's adjust the image fit to fit. And let's go ahead and grab our turnover background. There we go. So we've got all three of our data visualization page backgrounds brought in. Now that we've done that, the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to start adjusting our data visuals to make them look amazing and make them a little bit more cohesive and integrated with our background layout. 